I'm going to do a presentation on expressive line shapes and forms. I'm actually going to break this into two different videos as it could be a little bit lengthy. So once I'm finished with the section on shapes and forms, I will create a second video uh, looking at expressive lines. So terms you should be aware of. One is flow or major flow. When discussing the flow of a design, painting, sculpture, etc., we're talking about the strongest major direction that is dominating the overall design. For example, the overall flow of a design may be diagonal, vertical, uh, they can be spiral, um, they can be the infinity sign. You can see that in some classic paintings from the Renaissance. Um, but basically, when we talk about the flow, we're not concentrating on where does the eye go first, second, third in a piece. We're just saying what is the strongest all over direction that the piece is has taken on. The second thing that you need to understand is the word line quality. This refers to how a line appears to have been created, whether it's been drawn, painted, uh, created on a, a, on a computer. Um, line quality can be soft, smooth, broken, thick, thin, etc. And we will look at that in more detail in a little bit. So shapes and forms and energy levels. Why is this concept important? You've worked with shapes such as triangles, squares, and circles since you were a kid, so it's easy to take shapes for granted. On an unconscious level, forms and shapes and lines express different feelings and energy levels. When conceptualizing a design, consider the words your clients ask you to have embodied in the final design. Think about the type of energy level you would associate with those words. Once you've established the energy level, then apply the following knowledge about shapes, lines, and forms to your design. So shapes and forms. Shapes are two-dimensional, meaning that they have height and width. Forms are three-dimensional. They have height, width, and depth. So I would like you to note that throughout this presentation, I will use the term shape, but whatever I'm saying applies to both shapes and forms. It just becomes easier to say one opposed to both. So geometric shapes can feel man-made. Geometric shapes are precise and can imply a man-made quality to the viewer. Now, how we're defining man-made means not resulting from a natural process, artificial, manufactured, plastic, synthetic. Uh, below, we're looking at some paintings by Stella. And although he created that by hand, he did this at a time when um, computers were in their infancy and would, this is not computer generated, um, it, it, it still has a very uh, man-made geometric feel to it. You don't see the hand of man in it. So we're going to talk about four different shapes. The first is circles. Circles can imply passiveness and stability. Some consider it symbolic of the feminine. The circle has no angles to it, so it feeds its own energy back into itself. Of the, of the shapes we will discuss, this has the lowest energy period. The highest energy are triangles. Triangles create movement through the three corners, through its three corners. The movement can be push and pull, um, pushing towards something, pointing away from it. Corners can be used to pull the viewer's eye towards or away other objects in the picture plane. The energy level of the triangle is the highest of the four shapes. Part of this is because of the rule of odds. So let's take a brief moment and look at the rule of odds. We as humans are unconsciously attracted to odd numbers in shapes, objects, etc. Our brain tends, whenever we look at something that's even numbered, so maybe you have four balloons or eight balloons, what our mind does is it groups them into sets and then it just moves on. 
when you have an odd number, whether that's three, five, seven, etc., the I the the mind lingers a little longer on that because what it's trying to do is it's trying to create a center or a focal point. So it it, it keeps you a little more engaged. So um, with odd, no, let's, let's see what else we say here. Okay, so that is basically the rule of odds. So when we look back at triangles, you'll see it's got an odd number of corners, okay? So that's why that is additionally um, affects the energy level of the piece. Now squares have varied energy levels depending on their orientation. Squares are considered a stable shape. They gather, gather their strength from their absolute symmetry. So in other words, you look at a square and let's say it's two inches on one side. It will be two inches on all four sides. Um, when viewing a square, the energy is slightly more energetic than a circle, but it's still a lower energy, especially when viewed in this orientation. Now, when you turn the square onto its side, you start getting the energy off of the corners. The square is placed on its side, it becomes more energetic. When on its side, the square acts more like a triangle whose corners start to create a push-pull. Uh, this orientation of the square has a medium energy. Now, one of the reasons it's not quite as energetic as a triangle is because of the rule of odds. There's four corners in this opposed to three corners like in a triangle. Rectangles. Rectangles are almost as stable as a square. You've got two sides that are the same length, and, and the other sides may, or, or, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling here. You've got, uh, you, you've got two sides that are the same length. The energy level of the rectangle changes with depending on the orientation. So when we look at horizontal rectangles, they have a more tranquil, lower energy type of, of or lower energy. It's kind of uh, like they're resting. Now, medium energy for the rectangle is when you place it in a vertical orientation. Think about when you look at picket fences and, and how you, they, they seem to have this kind of beat, boom, 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 boom. So this has a higher energy level than a horizontal rectangle. Last is the orientation that's on a diagonal. This has the highest of the three uh, energy levels for the rectangle. And I'd also like to note that whenever you place any item on a diagonal flow, that will increase its energy level. It implies movement. So those were man-made shapes. Organic shapes. Most of the information on shapes and forms come from a book called Point and Line to Plane by the Russian artist Kandinsky. Now he wrote this in 1926. Currently, we know that organic objects can have a very man-made look. The ability to take photos through microscopes didn't make huge advancements until 1933, which is seven years after this book was written. Uh, although we can find examples of things found in nature that look very man-made, for example, these photos taken of through a microscope of algae, uh, in this discussion, we will follow the description of organic shapes and forms as described by Kandinsky. And in his definition of organic forms, he says that organic shapes and forms are often irregular and spontaneous. Their twists and curves don't conform to a set structure, as you would expect in a symmetrical shape, such as a square uh, circle. Uh, forms and shapes found in nature are often considered organic. 
Now, one thing that um, there is one shape of the four that we talked of that is considered both organic and man-made, and that is the circle. The circle, uh, besides being, uh, just so that right there, uh, look at the line quality of these two pieces and decide which one you feel is organic and which one you feel is man-made. Now, a reminder, qu line quality is you assess how you feel something was created. So when you look at this piece over here, I think it, f it becomes fairly obvious that it looks like it was created with paint. And it's it's got it, it's created by paint. This piece over here looks as if it was perhaps created on the computer. So thinking of the definitions that we have already discussed between man-made and organic, I would assess this piece as looking organic. You can see the hand of man in it. You can see the kind of inconsistency and in, in the shapes themselves. They're not perfectly round. Whereas this one looks like it was created on a computer and the circles look perfectly circular, no variation in them. So between these two examples, this first one would be an example of the circle as organic. And the second one is an example of the circle as man-made.